tip number one, don't rush in with a basic frontal assault with a short range weapon on a healthy Vindicator. Even if you have diamond armor and feel extra and vulnerable, you're not. It won't end well. Without having some enchanted diamond armor, some fighting skills, which I do not have, and best of all, a way to attack long range, like with a powerfully enchanted bow, I now believe my personal best course of action is to run away. Greetings, this is Gimpian. Welcome to a new episode of Kingdom Chronicles as we are playing on the Kingdom Chronicles server. I have been learning a lot playing on the server and I have just begun to experiment and play with the newest features of Minecraft 1.14. I have managed to get myself killed more times than any other king or queen on the Kingdoms Chronicles server, mostly because my fighting skills are horrible. What I'm trying to say is I want to give you some tips and tricks that I have learned, sometimes the hard way, to help others get the joy and fun out of Minecraft without as much frustration by learning from some of my mistakes. I also will include some things I just think are cool. With that said, let's move on to tip number two. I'm not sure how much of a tip this is, but the kind of obvious one is wear armor. The best armor that you can get, but don't walk around with no armor because that is guaranteed to get you killed by a single hit from a mob. What I have here is a sword with an enchantment that I don't like. It's knockback. And I'm going to fix it with the grindstone, which is a new block. You can place it in the grindstone. You can then move it over here and it gives you a few points of experience, not much, but it has removed all the enchantments. Then of course you can go over to the enchantment table and pick a new enchantment. My next tip is don't forget to fish. You can fish inside a single block of water. So you can set it up like this inside a house where you are protected from the mobs during the nighttime. You can fish for as long as you want to gather resources and it's not a horrible way to gain XP. Actually, it kind of is, but it's better than running around trying to kill mobs without a mob farm. Here you can see that in six minutes, I was able to gain 20 fish that I can eat plus some bone, and four levels of experience. This next trick I learned from Roscoe, who also plays on this server, and it has to do with positioning doors so that the mobs think they're open when they're closed and closed when they're open. When you place a door, it is closed, and then you can open the door it makes a different sound depending on whether it's opening or closing. I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm going to build a double door. So I need to take out the blocks on either side of this door so I can position the doors. Positioning the doors is backwards because essentially you're making doorways to the wall, to the sides of the doorway. Listen to the sound. Open, open, closed. Let's remove this door and reposition it. No, it has to be from this side. We don't need this door, so let's remove it. Open. Closed. Closed. Now we just put the cobblestone back to restore the walls. And then we're done.
the doors work the same way, and from looking at them, you can't tell the difference. Now let's see the doors in action. I close the doors out of habit, and you can see the mobs think they can go through the doors. And if we open the doors, the mobs can't get through. Although they do seem to be able to shoot through. They seem to know they can't shoot me, but they still want to walk through what they see is an open doorway. Thank you, Roscoe, for showing me this. The link to his channel, as well as all the other players on this server, is in the description. The next tip is to use scaffolding. That's a new block, and you can position it in some unique ways, making it go up without having to place them on top of each other, as you can see here. You can then go inside the scaffolding and climb up by simply jumping, and you continue to move up as almost like an elevator. To move down is just as easy. You move to the center of the scaffolding and press the shift key to move down, and that's all there is to it. Just like going up, you can also make the scaffolding go sideways. Eight blocks. The next tip has to do with another new block, the composter. You can put organic material, potatoes, leaves, everything but the poison potato. You can't put fish, it has to be vegetable material. And it produces bone meal, which is essentially fertilizer for your plants. The next tip has to do with villager trading and stubborn villagers. This villager is a librarian. A librarian stands behind a lectern. A lectern is the librarian's job site block. It is used to hold books and allow multiple players to read the book at the same time without holding it. This villager is being stubborn and doesn't want to get off his bed and cannot be reached. And if you can't reach him, he seems to ignore me. I can't trade with him. So I'm stuck here trying to figure out what to do. I can try waiting for him to move. Let me speed up this wait. This isn't working. Let's try a different approach. Carefully place down a block to step on and then break glass. Funny, now that gets his attention. And now I can trade with him. As you can see here, I have 28 emeralds and a book for a mending book. Be extra careful and be sure to put a block back over the hole to protect the librarian. Roscoe, if you want to know why this looks like it does, now you know. Next tip, copying banners. You put the banner you want to copy into the crafting table, add the blanks below it, and there you go. You have copies of 
the banner. Tip number nine. If you're gonna travel through the nether, do it on horseback. It's so much faster and so much better than walking or running. I know I should be saying something here, but I'm just enjoying the ride. Of course, this only works if you have nice, clean nether tunnels that you have built to travel through the nether safely. And don't forget to tie up your horse at the other end so that it doesn't wander off. Next time I use the nether portal to travel back to my kingdom, my horse will be waiting for me, and again, I won't have to walk. I can just ride my horse. This brings me to tip number 10. I'm trying to tie off my horse here, and it goes through the portal on its own. That's not what I intended. Now I have to go get it. Now that I've got it, I've got to take it back through the nether portal, which brings me to my tip, which is more of a warning. Sometimes things don't go right. Uh-oh. The horse was killed going through the portal. Just to make sure, you can see the horse is not here, and I have a saddle and armor in my inventory. I'm back to walking, and of course I need a new horse again. This seems to be a feature of 1.14. From now on, I will just leave the horse in the nether. Thanks for watching, and goodbye! Aw, oh, I have horse leather.